going on everybody we are out here for this week's episode of dissecting the ridge me and uh cameraman behind the scenes rob taylor howdy it's out here on uh, hole number 15 and uh rob we uh got a, got a little cold last night and but the sun's out so it's not too too bad but i think it uh, feels pretty good right now being as crazy as alabama is it's supposed to be 80 degrees on Thursday. So Wonderful. We'll, we'll sounds see. like Florida to me. That sounds more like Florida. But uh, 14 was not our best effort. I think we uh, we both agree that uh, it just shows that even uh, even the best of us can can get eaten up by a golf course. So, but we are. So I technically still have the box. We're here. 15 long par five. This is basically one of the one holes that it does make a major difference and we'll talk about it uh of what tees you play because if i was not playing from way back here i would not be hitting driver because it does get very narrow in the landing area there's trouble left trouble right but i believe and i don't play out back here often but i believe that i can't reach too much of the trouble from where we're at am i correct by that rob that is correct pete okay. um like he said, it squeezes in both sides, so you're looking at uh, it, it kind of falls off on both sides. So you can end up either left or right in some trouble. But off the tee with the driver from the back tees here, you have a little bit more space. Um, still not an easy tee shot, though. So. And, uh, well, I mean, the uh, Rob Taylor and Real Tour Golf has been – we've got nothing else to do when it's uh, 20 degrees out in the pro shop. So we've been uh, working on some feels. And That's I'm right. gonna attempt to make sure that uh, I get better at this game rather than worse. And who better than Rob Taylor in Real Tour Golf? So I technically still have the box. I'm gonna go ahead and go. I have obviously driver in my hand, par five. I think from back here it's gonna be a three shot hole regardless for me. I think, right? I mean Yeah, more than likely it's you know, it's cold today, so the only good thing is usually this holds into the wind and today we don't really have any wind so i'm curious to see where the drives go okay so i'm my aiming point is there's two small dead trees um and i know that the fairway kind of bends down to the right a little bit but everything feeds hard right so what you don't want to do is there's been times i, th I thought i've hit a really good one and find out i'm right into the trees or there's a little pond down there that they I've uh, gone in before, so I'm going to aim right at those two little trees out there. So I am going to be curious about that one. It, I didn't hit it that bad. It cut a little bit more than I thought. Or I, that I wanted it to, but uh, we're gonna see down there. So you should. This will be a good test to see from back here. If you miss a little bit either way, uh, what kind of trouble you can get in. So I'm gonna. I'm hopefully just off the fairway to the right, but uh, it could also be uh, pretty pretty ugly. All right. So uh, like I said a second ago, my ball hopefully right side of the fairway. If not, it'll be. Uh, just off the car path probably but rob sporting the new cherokee ridge the ridge beanies hang on one second you just said something it's gonna be just off the cart path oh cheap plug, plug. To, cheap plug off the car path plug to our new podcast podcast yes so we, we recorded episode two that will be launching tomorrow morning if you're listening watching this on sunday it launches every other monday so it will be launching Monday, and this week's episode is, uh, we kind of start getting into the nuts and bolts of different things in the golf industry. So, uh, I just got back from the GIS show, which is the Golf Course Superintendents Convention down in Orlando. So, Rob and I talk a little uh, conventions and golf conferences, which sound boring, but uh, there's a lot, a lot to it. So Big fun, big fun. Big fun, but, all right, Rob, it's actually warming up nicely. Yes. Yeah, it's actually nice out right now. So, Rob also has driver. So usually what happens is Rob has to sit back here and while we uh, go way up here to the uh, the blue tees. So usually uh, 
Rob's hitting over top of our head, which is never, never safe. All right. Hit a good one, Rob. So, uh, Pete kind of talked through his. Uh, I, I got a similar scenario here. What I typically do is, like he said, these, you got those two dead trees up there, which I zoomed in on when Pete was hitting. Um, that's a good spot to start it. Especially for me, I generally play a little bit of a fade. So I want to start it kind of at those two dead trees down the house line and work it back to that group of pine trees up there closer to the green. So that's the intended line. Um, with this hole, because it's a par five and it, it can be reachable, I have a tendency to kind of over, over swing on this one um, and miss it out to the right. So I'm going to try and be cognizant of that and try and make a good swing. Uh, maybe not so much speed, but more solid contact and try and get it down there to a point where I can reach the green. Especially in the cold weather, it is uh, sometimes you, you slower make good contact is better than go after it because colder weather hurts the hands. Yeah, I actually, um, I put a video out not too long ago when we were doing our swing, our takes on number 12 and... Uh, a big key in the cold is a lot of guys try to hit it harder. They think like, ah, it's cold. I got to swing harder to hit it harder. Um, you know, it doesn't matter how hard you swing in the cold. The ball's going to go shorter than, than it normally would. So the more important key is to hit it more solid. And the way you create distance when it's cold is by making sure you're maintaining your width because you have a number of different things fighting against you with that. You're usually layered up, so you're wearing layers of clothes that are constrictive. You know, they're not allowing you to really turn like you're accustomed to. So you have to be more aware of that and and kind of slow down and take your time getting into a good full backswing because that's the only way you're gonna generate power and that's the only way you're gonna hit it consistently solid. So I'm gonna try that. I'll take my rehearsal little rehearsal swing that I usually make and I'll just slow it down a beat. And then I'm going to count down and go. So Rob's ball was pretty much ideal to the Two little dead, I, I don't want to say dead, dormant trees down there. So I think Rob is in, like he likes to say, position A. Well, I'm curious to see how far it went because usually it's into the wind. That line is perfect. Um, I'm curious if on the line of the trees, because I actually started it pretty much just the left edge of the trees and it cut barely at all. Uh, went pretty straight. So we'll see if it's still up on top or if it actually got to that hill and down it's going to be fine either way but it just could de going to depend on what kind of lie i have all right so leaving the car pat or leaving the car pat <laughs> leaving the uh the tea box and uh rob you just said that uh, you're definitely curious to see where you're let your ball landed you felt like you hit it pretty good um i'm probably going to be a couple walmarts behind you like normal but yeah. uh good i mean good par five i mean it's a good you just finished 14 which is a tough par three especially if you're playing any of the farther back tees and it's a good opportunity to try to get one back on the field and uh, i see one left side of the fairway i see one on the right side of the fairway well, let's have hope so but uh we're gonna see if we can't track our balls down and put, a, put another good swing on it all right so we got robs and well, uh, take a look. I will also show you how close left is. We do have construction of the cove. So if anybody's interested in a new home here at Cherokee Ridge, Rob is. So you can be Rob's neighbor. But uh, yeah, gorgeous homes coming in. But it is all OB down the left. And so from that, either the blue or white tee, the landing area is going to be just down this hill right there, just down that hill. And it can, if you miss either left or right, there's that pond to the right or there's OB left. So there's definitely trouble. Usually what we do is I lay back to pretty much where Rob's ball is right here on the flat. Um, we're going to walk over there when Rob's done hitting and show you how I felt like I barely missed right and I am in some trouble. So I'm going to have to get out of jail. 
but uh, we are car path only today. So Rob, good job driving. And he is getting his club and camera so we can see if he's gonna try to reach this green in two. But there's a green up there, guarded by a couple bunkers to the right, bunker to the left. But mostly if you can get it in play off the tee, you have plenty of room to, uh, to put it down there. But really good par five. And Rob, you gonna go for it or you got a couple sticks there? Definitely a go. I'm about 10 yards further up than a lot of times I am on this hole. Um, and it's it's uh, gonna be in the neighborhood of 260 yards to the green. So it's probably still gonna be three wood for me. Okay. So it would be a layup for me because uh, my little driving iron, I don't think I can get there. So I would be laying up to a number. How important is that to not just take your largest club and just whack it and actually lay back to a number that you're comfortable with well you know what i heard some very 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 valuable advice and it's always been kind of my philosophy on it too um patrick cantley so obviously now they track stats on tour with for everything and these guys are you know might as well be statisticians at this statisticians at this point because that's they're always looking at that stuff so pat patrick cantley was interviewed not too long ago and he said his objective on par fives every time is to get it as close to the green as he possibly can. So it, whatever you can hit that gets you the closest to the green, your percentage of getting up and down goes up. And for amateurs, I, I don't think that changes because it's, it's hard for an amateur to hit a wedge, period, in my opinion, because a wedge has a sharp leading edge. There's a lot of opportunity for, um, you know, mishits, fat and thin. So wouldn't you rather be closer to the green and, you know, have to take a shorter swing, in my opinion? So the uh, thought process of that kind of changed over the, the years and obviously with, with stats and people keeping track of everything now. Yep. Um, it see, has I mean, you, I, I learned something here on Dissecting the Ridge. I would lay back to a number, try to get me a, like a full wedge in, and uh, it actually does make sense, though. But And then we also have another ruling here that there is a sprinkler head that might be in the stance of raw we're no, going to find I, out i checked it out it's not okay um, all right so we so be in it's good shape play here. it as it lies play it as it lies all right i am set here we're gonna have to back it up so i can get everything in so really behind the back. scenes here at uh dissecting the ridge there we go, there we go. all right we're on we're on. All right, so about 260 yards. Um, if I hit this any good at all, I should easily be able to get at least to the front of the green. So my intention again is to, I'm trying to hit this in the center of the green. That way, if I miss right or left, bunker, chip, whatever it is, pitch, I'm in good shape to make four. That was smoky. I couldn't tell if you got there or not. I can't, yeah, I can't see from here. Um, it was hit good. Maybe just in the front bunker. Maybe it got up. I'm not sure, but uh, I'll take it. Yeah, and uh, you're a cold weather golfer, it looks like. You like the cold. <laughs> All right, so yeah. you see Rob walking down the hill that my ball decided to go on, and there I am right there. So Could have been a hot take there. I've slipped on that hill before. Oh. Could have, been Could have been good footage. Good footage. So, from the farther up tees, and this is why I don't take driver, is I don't feel like I hit that that offline. It catches a slope, and you can end up in that little pond right there. So, but here I am in jail. I'm going to attempt to take four iron. Hit a little punch out there. Give myself uh, opportunity on the next one. Take my medicine. Pete's got, I mean, he's got room to work here. He's going to yeah. have to do a little. Stop, Pete. Stop. 
a little finessing of this one here. So we went right at that second yeah, the tree over there. Yeah, the idea was for that to cut around, <laughs> and it went, uh, I wish I could hit it straight all the time. So, but it did look like it kicked right off the, off the tree, which saved me, and you gotta, hopefully I got a shot at the next one. Yes, sir, it will be fine. Got Pete's right, ball. I did get the members bounce off the, uh, the pine, and I do have 116, and it is fairly open, so we're gonna see the... It's got one branch. Maybe Way up top. Yeah, he doesn't have much going Real here. Golf. I just don't think I got it all, but actually, I this is pretty bad. nice. Yeah. That was a good motion there. Yeah, wasn't too bad. But uh, long putt for birdie, though, so I should be able to say far. Boom. All right, so Rob's ball came up just short. And as you can see from the ocean behind him, ocean in the bunker, we have gotten a lot of rain, Rob. Lots. Lots. Three inches the other day. But uh, Rob's got a little chip coming up. Plenty of green to work with here. Gorgeous greens. Gorgeous greens, regardless of the weather. Rob, what's your, uh, you flying this all the way to the hole, halfway? Let it release out? Yeah, this one's going to be uh, flying about two-thirds there. Um, it's back up the hill a little bit to the hole, and it breaks to the right, Quite. by my recollection. So uh, I'm going to hit 56 and fly it, like I said, about two-thirds of the way in the air. It should kind of grab up a little bit, but it'll release out. This won't be a crazy spinner. Not necessary here. Not really any advantage to that here. She did check up on you. All right, so not uh, not best by Rob right there. And then here's my ball. So mine, uh, from where I was at and off the tee, not too bad. So that's what I'm looking at. About 35 feet for a uh, little birdie. All right, Pete's in the neighborhood of 30 feet. Seems like we're having a lot of 30 footers here on dissecting the ridge. We need to start hitting it close. Well, speaking of not hitting it close. And that is huh. not good. It's a, uh, not only a misread, but a guy that hasn't putted in a few days. Yeah, I'm not giving you I'm not giving you that one. Oh, I don't think, no way. Uh, I don't think you're going to give me the next one either. All right, so let's see if Rob can... Uh, do better than me because that was like I said a misread I had it hard going right didn't get it halfway there Rob's doing his uh, little yoga dance there but I have a feeling Rob Taylor's gonna make one of these I'm due. he is due I gotta make up this seven shots we gave up on the last couple holes we did have a frost delay so uh Greens were not uh, double cut, double rolled this morning. So he's going to have to make sure he gets it there. And I don't think he did. You are not kidding. No. That's are you, crazy. Am I away at least? Are you going to finish? I'm going to finish. All right, he's going to finish. Train rolling. Hear, hear that that ball in the bottom of the cup. It's got a 
gotta go right, you would think. The oh boy. treaded three putt from Rob Taylor. Let's see if I can win another hole. All right, I've just three putted. Pete is attempting not to three putt here. He's got his par putt about six feet. And he has won the hole, ladies and gentlemen. Players make it one of the counts, fellas. Just oh never boy, never give up after, after the tee shot. It uh, didn't look good for me, so I kept battling and uh, won the hole. Hey, we're just trying to make this a nice, tight match for you guys, yeah. so that it's more interesting to watch the last we several have, holes. Uh, 16, 17, 18, and I'm down only two now. I think two. you're down. You're down one down now. Down one. Uh oh. Yeah. Hello, Cool J said, "Don't call the comeback." But, uh, all right, hole 15, par five. Rob's gonna give you the view back up the hill. Good par five, I like it. Thoughts, Rob? She's a beaut. Obviously, when we're in the springtime, you will see lots of green grass where this is going. Camera angle here. Um, you can see it's, there's a lot of tilt to it. You know, it goes pretty well downhill all the way off that tee and uh, everything slopes off the sides. I don't know if you can quite see it from here, but over on this side, past the uh, dormant trees, it is very severely downhill. Um, your balls are trying to go to the flat up here. If you miss it right, you end up down here where Pete was. You miss it left, you could end up down there uh, over by the new construction um, Dilworth Homes over here. Ooh. So, uh, a good hole can be played, uh, you know, it can be a three shot hole. It can be a knock it on in two, depending on what tee you're on and how far you hit it. So, yeah, so this was the first one going away from the, the lake. Now we're going to go on 16, go back towards the lake. That's correct. So we're, we're going this hole. direction through I, this. I love the view from here, especially like you said, when everything greens up, it's uh, definitely, definitely a good looking golf hole for sure. So it plays well. So it makes you hit a golf shot and figure out a way not to three putt. I didn't figure it out. Yeah. All right. We'll see y'all next, next week. Yeah. Next week. Hole 16. <laughs>